You just got your beautiful new 4K monitor. Welcome to the best resolution gaming, movie, and creative productivity, my friend. But if you want to take that experience and stretch it bigger, this Samsung TU8000 55-inch 4K Smart TV is just a bit up in price over the 43-inch model, itself a bump up over a 32-inch 4K. So is this thing an actual good option or completely overkill? And we're going to compare it against the Samsung 32-inch 4K monitor we covered recently. Will this be worth it? I'll tell you what is worth it. Our sponsor, you. You hold the power in your hand to support us just by hitting subscribe. We do this for you. That one click helps us grow and we give back by making useful and hopefully entertaining videos and answering lots of your comments. So please use that finger. Lock screen boring? We made one. Free download, link in the description. The Samsung TU8000 55-inch Smart TV has a huge VA-type panel, 49 inches wide by 31 high, and weighs 31 pounds, and yet it still manages to appear light and futuristic. Sporting ultra-thin 3mm bezels with a pixel-to-air of 9mm, and four onyx black finished feet for the stand that looks better than other plain chrome stands, and this price is around the $500 to $600 mark with network and Wi-Fi 2.4 and 5 gigahertz connectivity and HDR10, 10 plus and HLG support, which is a broadcast HDR format. What this panel's got going for it is it's a cheap, sharp, detailed 4K thin bezel display with outstanding 6400 to one contrast and black uniformity, best in class response and input lag, great upscaling and motion handling and smart TV functionality. Auto low latency mode detects game systems like PS4 and your PC and turns on automatically. And it works with PS5 and Xbox Series X at 4K 60Hz with HDR. And it sounds good too. And overall, we really like this TV. However, you'll fight it first to get good brightness, which averages 250 nits and maxes at 300. It doesn't have local dimming, no 120Hz, no variable refresh or FreeSync. It hates DTS audio and has poor viewing angles typical for VA panels. It's actually better purposed as a gaming display than a TV. We saw the 43-inch TU8000 may have a brightness glitch also when game mode is auto-enabled. Disabling and re-enabling game mode apparently fixes this. With a kind of retro opening animation, we were unimpressed with the out-of-box experience as the default settings have fairly low brightness. Considering what we saw in Costco versus what we got, we initially thought that there was a problem, but we fixed it by setting the brightness slider to max, gamma selection to 2.2, and picture mode to vivid in our territory called dynamic. The key though, hard to find under settings, general eco solution, was turning off ambient light detection. With that enabled, the TU8000 slowly but a bit aggressively lowers brightness. Look Samsung, it's fine to make a TV with just okay brightness, but don't give your customer a poor first experience. Don't bump down the brightness slider, don't choose a picture mode that further reduces this, and it would be better to teach the user how the ambient light setting works during setup. Most consumers won't know to look for this, as it's not in picture settings, and end up being unhappy with a dim TV or just returning it, which will reflect on their experience with Samsung products. On color, this panel lacks a wider color gamut, and it struggles with truly bright colors in SDR. The TU8000 accepts HDR, but true HDR needs full array local dimming, which this doesn't have, and a peak of 1000 nits. Even 600 or 700 will give you a much better HDR experience. Compared to SDR, the full screen is slightly dimmer in HDR, with the brightest parts hitting just 310 nits, so consider this supported. HDR works in Netflix, YouTube, and from USB, which plays back most video and audio formats except the aforementioned DTS audio. The upside is this TU8000 has super low response time and input lag. Turning on game mode in Settings, General, External Device Manager cuts input lag from 83 down to 20 milliseconds, which makes it one of the fastest TVs for gaming. And you can still get faster. In Game Motion Plus settings, disable Clear Motion or just disable Motion Plus entirely. PC Mag reports this brings it down to 3.2 milliseconds, able to compete with gaming monitors. But if you need a faster 120Hz refresh rate and VRR support, there's the more expensive Samsung RU9000. Flipping to the back, we find clips on the feet for cable management, a mini right angle power plug, which is standard sized, and a VESA 200 by 200 mount, bolts are M8 25 millimeters. The guide actually suggests 20 to 22 uh, millimeters long, but with a bracket, it's too short to thread in. There's a single control button at the back right of the center Samsung bump, controlling power, volume, channel, and source. Connections are two USB ports. Top one is marked for hard drives. 
two HDMI 2.0 ports with the top HDMI 2 handling EARC antenna, and beside that one more HDMI 2.0, legacy composite, which is great for an old game system, optical out, and network port. You'll lose that last HDMI if you want to wall mount it though. Sound is from 20 watt speakers, good overall but with adaptive, it gives a bit more to the low end without disrupting the mid range, and it's pretty decent output from the two 8000 speakers. Support for Dolby 5.1 and Atmos via TrueHD is here, but DTSX, HDMA, and even basic DTS are all unsupported. Although all plastic, it's well built and sturdy with little wobble, but the picture is what's really important and it's good. Though gradients do show a little bit of banding in all colors, more noticeable in dark shades. In 2021, HDMI sources display full screen, so all source pixels match all TV pixels one to one. Any overscan stretches the image, actually reducing resolution and introducing a bit of blur, so we expect zero overscan on all new displays. But yeah, like some other Samsung TVs, overscan is on by default on the TU8000. Fix it by going into the aspect ratio menu and change it from 16 by 9 to fit to screen. Come on Samsung, let's get with this decade. However, one good thing is that the TU8000 can auto-detect which source is active, detect your game system, and set it to game mode quickly. The Tizen OS menu is easy to use, and setting up a Samsung account and registering took about 10 minutes. Once done, you can visit the App Store. The Tizen menu does have ads which you can't opt out, with suggested content you also can't opt out, disappointing on both counts. Accessing settings is 5 left presses, which is a bit annoying when setting up, and if you hit menu it stays up for up to 60 seconds, and there's no way to adjust this time. Depending on region you may get two remotes, but we just got the slim version, a 12 button plus D-pad remote. It's compact and minimalist, with buttons for Netflix, Amazon Prime and internet, uh, number input, uh, voice command, ambient mode and home, back and play. And since the volume and channel rockers have a down press, mute on volume and nothing on channel, this seems like a missed opportunity for a source button. You can choose voice command between Amazon Alexa and Samsung's Bixby, which has specific TV controls like changing source, but doesn't work in apps like Netflix. We hear there is support for Google Assistant now also. Wireless worked well with fast setup and allows mirroring your PC or mobile screen. You get remote access to PCs, Samsung DeX docking, and a web browser as well. The TU8000 appears in the SmartThings app and you can control it also with your phone. Speaking of PC, it does chroma 444 at 1080p and 4K, helpful for reading text. Just set the input icon to PC for that HDMI and enable input signal plus in settings. We usually recommend all picture processing off for the purest picture, but the TU8000's contrast enhancer works well on low in SDR, and HDR benefits from a high setting. Any changes you make in HDR will remain for HDR only. And HDR is subtle, but still beautiful here. We can say some rich colors, not just the best we've seen. Finally, power consumption averaged 95 watts during use. Ambient modes, low brightness, shows art and pictures like a photo frame at 24 watts. And standby is just under a watt, though it takes a minute to get there. Please take a moment to hit like, get subscribed, and click the bell. It supports us, and you'll get notified of our latest videos and reviews. Now to be clear, this is a pretty solid TV, and the TU8000 will be a great gaming monitor with decent out of the box color accuracy, which is actually excellent after some calibration, and does skin tones very well. After fiddling with settings, brightness is good, and the thin bezel minimalist look works. In bright rooms, it doesn't do so well, the gamma curve rendering everything a bit darker than it should, and it has those VA panel viewing angles, not bad, but not great compared to IPS and especially QLED. But whether for PS4 or 5, Xbox Series X or PC, it delivers a really snappy gaming experience. Now we reviewed the 32 inch Samsung U32 J590 recently, a uh, link up here, and this monitor has a great looking panel. Over the TU8000, it's got FreeSync, a bit better color coverage, PIP and PBP, a five way joystick for control, and we complained about the lack of a DisplayPort cable, but hey, at least there was an HDMI cable in the box. It's also 200 bucks or so cheaper. These 4K 60Hz screens are tied for ultra-fast response times and low input lag with the same brightness, and annoying startup menus. In the TU8000's favor, it has three HDMI capable of 4K 60Hz, the 32-inch has one DisplayPort and one HDMI capable of that, but HDMI 1 is version 1.4, and that can only do 30Hz, and why this is unmarked is beyond me, causing complaints when consumers can't get their 60fps working. 
The 32 inch has a poor menu and there's no speakers at all. The thicker bezel gives a pixel to air a half centimeter wider than this 55 inch and the monitor wobble, yeah. There's also a problematic non-standard AC adapter. The TU-8000 has a remote and great menu, and you'd think that the two Samsung divisions could share designs so we didn't have this ugly menu. And this has smart TV functionality with internet and Netflix and media playback. Choosing one comes down to three factors. First is your available space and if it will work for your setup. Two, how many HDMI 4K 60Hz inputs you need. Three, color grading. The U32J590 is better here. However, the lack of speakers means if you want a gaming experience out of the box, the TU-8000 is your best bet. After pointing out all the areas for improvement, they're still both being used and appreciated here in the studio. Though, if you're looking for option C, link up here for the 32-inch 4K Acer ET322QK review we did, and that mod solves most of the issues with this 32-inch. If you pick up a Sammy TU-8000 or this 32-inch uh, J590 here, Using our affiliate links below will help us here with no extra cost to you. So Samsung, here's how you can improve your next year's offering. Fix that initial brightness out of the box so that the buyer doesn't have to work to get what they paid for, or better, use a brighter panel. Overscan is a relic of CRT TV days. It should not be on by default for HDMI, like ever. That last HDMI will get blocked when wall mounted. So let's see four or five side plug HDMI ports. Use a clean startup or give options to disable startup menus and shorten display times. Not having DTS support sucks, as half of our media is in DTS or DTS HDMA. And finally, throw a bone to your monitor division so they can improve their menu. And bezel. And stand. All things considered, Samsung's delivered a pretty amazing cheap 4K gaming panel, even though it's classified as a smart TV for the masses with the TU-8000, and we look forward to the next model which hopefully addresses these points as we want to see them hit a home run. Any further updates to the review will add to the companion post at techspinreview.com, and we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook if you want to see when we drop new videos. So thanks for watching guys, please hit like if this gave you some good info, and check out the links in the video description. You can support us directly by hitting subscribe, the bell, and if you have a question or if we missed something, please do tell us down below, along with your ideas for what you want to see next. Thanks and bye for now.